1986, I finished my doctorate in PhD, uh, my doctorate in physics, and I went to Copenhagen for my first job, my first postdoc at the Niels Bohr Institute. And uh, about two weeks after I arrived at the, the synagogue, I saw a very strikingly beautiful woman with uh, <coughs> reddish hair and green eyes um, at the synagogue. And then I saw that she had an eight-year-old son, and I felt very bad for looking at a married woman. But it turned out <laughs> she wasn't married. She had divorced that, uh, the father of the son. Uh, but she actually was married because she had, her father had arranged a fictitious marriage to a, uh, an American businessman who was in, based in, in <coughs> Copenhagen and, and came as a tourist to Leningrad. And, uh, and that was his way of getting her and them out of the Soviet Union. And uh, after a few, uh, she, had, uh, she had arrived in Copenhagen just uh, maybe two weeks before me. Um, and after we became friends, I volunteered to go to uh, visit her parents in, uh, <coughs> in Leningrad and tell them how she was doing. Um, so I went and she sent with me uh, a picture of uh, her and her son. And she sent with me five, uh, three pairs of very elegant ladies' shoes for her mother. Um, and I went off in, uh, to, on a plane to Leningrad. <laughs> and when I came there, I was um, taken out of the line. I was the only one taken out of the line except another fellow who just happened also to be visiting uh, Refusnik. Um, I was taken, the, taken to a, s a small room. There, a couple of agents shouted at me, Uvas yes Arusia! Uvas yes Arusia! Well, I had happened to take a summer course in Russian just before that. <laughs> but I knew everything. You have a Arusia, but the teacher had neglected to tell what Arusia is. So, Arusia is pistole. Then I understood they asked if I had a, a weapon. So I said, no. Um, by this time, <coughs> I was returned without shoes to the line where <laughs> I was. Um, but, but what set these off was my tefillin. Um, but they gave me back my tefillin, I get, went back in the line, the, the guard, who actually did speak English, I think, but although these agents didn't, he uh, looked very closely at this picture of, um, of my friend Yelena and her son, and then he started to go uh, for the shoes, so I said very quickly, that's for my personal use. <laughs> and, and there were no more questions. <laughs> I'll just say that um, I did visit her parents. I even stayed overnight with them, which I think was strictly forbidden by her father, uh, who was like a Maccabee, some kind of fellow like that. He said, okay, maybe they'll just get me out of here all the faster uh, if they find out. But uh, since I had some Russian, I was able to be pretty independent. I don't think he got into trouble. They were left, they were, they were, they were let out of the Soviet Union, they went to the United States, and then, um, then to Israel, and my, I, I'm still in good terms with um, Yelena, and we exchanged an email. I told her what I was going to say, and she said, where did I get the money to buy shoes? 